already have next year's date set, so mark your calendars. Um, April 24th and 25th. I hear from a lot of people that people did not get their invitations. Please give us your contact information so that we know how to reach you. Be it email, we can send this out by email, or we can send out snail mail. I have a feeling a lot of people's invitations got lost in the snail mail approach. So please let us know. I want to thank our supporters. We can't do this without all of our supporters, and here's a list of them with a special shout out to our gold contributors, which would be Novartis and Sanofi. And then the people that make transplant happen. We have a huge group, and I can't possibly name every single person that's involved with transplant because there's a lot of MAs and, and other people that have very important roles, but the people that you may be talking to would be predominantly the evaluation team in San Francisco. You can see Stephanie and Prince, our evaluation team and outreach, which many of you probably have met, Jackie Ferris and Evie Saharas. Fresno, Kelly Yero is well known out there. Hawaii, Janine, I don't know if she's here or not. And Modesto is Nikki Ehrenberg. Transplant nurse coordinators, we have a team of living donors. I've uh, bolded the people that have either new to our program or have changed seats on the bus. So you can see this list here. Annette has just moved over from deceased donor to living donor and our list of uh, living donor coordinators. Deceased donor coordinators, Regina has moved in from a triage position into a deceased donor coordinator. And then we have a post-transplant and special projects. Flora, I'm not even going to say her name, Kachijian. Um, who helps us with various things, including calling patients after hours. We have a, a series of NPs, PAs, and RNs in the post side. Uh, Sire is our new nurse practitioner. She's just getting on board. And then Crystal Rogers was our living donor coordinator. She's changed seats into the post. Julia Lee is a new uh, post coordinator. And then our other people we've had, we've got Katie Wilcoxon that is sitting in the back over there. She's a new nurse practitioner not so new anymore, she'd been there about a year, I think, on the inpatient side. Where we have a lot of changes are in, oh, these aren't highlighted, management and support staff. We are changing some of our management, um, so you will see Marco Chavez has just started this week. Marco, where are you? Marco's over there, he's gonna be in charge of the post-transplant clinic. Uh, Kimberly Grossweiler is over there next to Marco, she is gonna be helping us get our pre-transplant side um, sorted out, and then we're also in the hunt for a living donor uh, manager. And then there's social workers, financial counselors, none of which can we do this job without them. We have a slew of physicians. We have surgeons, we are now gonna be up to 10. We just offered a position to Dr. Um, Jay Gardner, who will be starting Chris in August. Um, he's one of our new, he's a fellow that will be coming on as an attending. We just offered and have a signed contract from uh, Dr. Amarpali Brar, who will be joining us as a transplant nephrologist from SUNY Downstate. She's not starting until January 1st, but I'm actually very excited about having a new person start. Um, and then our PEDS nephrology group as well. Um, a couple important things. I've been out in the community talking to people all the referring docs and our nurses have been out talking to dialysis units. One of the things we hear is, we can't get a hold of you. I think if I heard one complaint the most, it's we don't know how to get a hold of you. So we have set up a pre-transplant line for the MDs. Please do not share this with the patients. Um, this is for you guys to call us and say, what's going on with my patient? I don't know who to call. I don't know what to do. This should be picked up by May Elizardi and uh, is a live human being. You don't have to go through a phone tree. The post-transplant clinic number for MDs, this number's been in place for a very long time, but I think people don't know it. And there's a card on your spots uh, with this phone number. This gets picked up by Anita Payton. It may get transferred over to the answering service if her lines are busy, um, but if it goes to the answering service, then it goes to the docs often. So these are two numbers, keep in your pocket, give it to your front desk to not give to the patients, but for you guys to know how to get a hold of us. Um, we hear you, we wanna change this, we wanna make it better. Uh, some changes in the post-transplant world. We're opening a post-transplant clinic in Fresno. This will help offload our Parnassus clinics, and the patients I'm talking to are really excited about this. So we are gonna have a post-transplant clinic. I think our first one is July 3rd. That will be starting soon. We're also starting telehealth visits, um, which will also help patients that not have to traverse all the way to San Francisco. 
Kaiser is very familiar with telehealth visits. We do those in a similar way, except they're telephone visits at, at Kaiser when we're over there. But when we're doing, we're actually doing a video Zoom visit. So this is getting started. I've done two so far. Um, but we're going to have a whole schedule for being able to do telehealth visits and help offload our clinics and help the patients not have to travel. We're still requesting help for patients that are well-established uh, and stable after five years. If the uh, labs are ordered by non-UCSF physicians, we don't see them often. Even though I know many people, and we put in CC results to X doctor, and I'm sure that many of you put in CC results to UCSF, we don't get them. We think somebody else is looking at them. So if you've got patients you're ordering labs on after five years, please review them. If you've got a question, call us, um, because we may not be seeing them, so don't rely on us to necessarily see them if you ordered them. And we are available 24-7 if you need us. Uh, listing status. This is our big project for this year, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this. This is an example. I don't know how easy it is to read from where you're sitting, but we're going to be sending out these reports to every practice, and what it'll have is a referring MD. One of the problems with the referring MD, this is an example that Carolyn made for me, is that the doctor that referred the patient to us for evaluation is who's going to be listed on the sheet. That may not be the doctor that the patient is seeing now. So it may be the wrong doctor, which means we're communicating with the wrong practice or the wrong physician within the group. So you're going to get these reports. What I want to point out here is this is the referring MD. So you want to look at that. You want to look at your patient, what their status is. Are they inactive? Are they listed? If they're inactive, why are they inactive? So in this case, I didn't make this, and we won't go into my politics, Donald Trump, not a, a, a candidate right now because of BMI. <clears throat> Bill Gates, listed inactive for financial considerations. So <laughs> look at this carefully, because you may say, oh, this BMI this patient's lost 40 pounds. Well, we don't know. Um, we may touch base with the patient eventually, but if they're inactive, they may not be uh, contacted for a little bit. So if you know the patient's gone through bariatric, they've gone on some self-disciplined, tremendous weight loss program and looks fantastic, let us know. Call us back. We'll, we'll fix this. Now you have a phone number to reach us. So I, I, what I really want is to everybody look at this. Have your office workers, your case managers, whoever is looking at your patient lists, this is how you're going to know what their status is. We're going to need those back to us with corrections. So if you say, oh, this patient died, let us know. We'll take them off the list. Um, they're not your patient. They moved to Las Vegas. Let us know. Um, that way we can update our list and it'll be more accurate. And I think we're going to try and send out um, mailers that can send the sheets back to us. We're still working on that detail. Send out those lists? Yep. Yeah, it'll, have, it'll be by physician. So we'll group them by practice, uh, physicians in that practice. Um, my biggest concern is I found a lot of times that the listed physician is incorrect. Hopefully it's in the right practice, but it's not always the case. So yes, you'll be getting those. So she'll be getting changes in our practice now? Yeah, sure. I mean, on there, there's a card on your desk that has who's in your practice. Um, and this is going to be a big project for this year. We'll probably send these out probably every six months. I think, maybe, yeah. quarterly maybe. Or, depends how many patients you have. Um, but we really want to get this fixed because I think this is really going to help clean up our wait list. Uh, is that it on the end of these slides? OK, so Chris is going to talk next. So Tim, I need you to switch slides for me, please. It's not advancing, though. There you go. Oh, education for patients. We are doing some outreach. I, I think living donor education is probably the most fruitful of the education series that we do to educate patients and their families about living donation. I've worked a little bit with Kelly Yuri, who's our Fresno coordinator. She is very much into education, and what we need to talk to patients about is the importance of weight loss, the importance of exercise, um, how, to, how to maintain your... Um, pro your ability to get a transplant by exercise, weight loss, and self-care. So those are things that we need to educate our patients about and what to expect on the wait list. I don't know why this is not advancing now. Okay, now it's Chris's time. Thank you.